Hello, welcome to the third webinar in our quality control series. Today, we're talking about using digital standards. Presenting today is Tim Mao, our Applications Engineering and Technical Support Manager at XY Pantone. I'm Robert Grotans, the Global Technical Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. If at any time during this webinar you have a question, please use the questions form on this page to submit your question. We will do our best to follow up with you as soon as possible after the webinar. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tim to get things started. Thank you, Robert. So uh, as our title slide um, tells us, we're gonna talk about using digital standards um, and, and using them to help improve um, our color quality control process. So let's dive in. Um, we're going to start, first of all, to talk about why we would use a digital standard. Why, why do we need to share that data? And it really boils down to this, because it's all about the target or the standard, whatever you want to call it. We've got to make sure we're all shooting for the same thing, um, like an archery target, right? And maybe this, is, this depicts our color. Our color standard falls right dead center in the bullseye there. Maybe our tolerance is everything in the yellow circle, so we want to make sure we're there and, you know, make sure we're aiming for the same thing. And so I might do that and say, hey, there's my sample. It looks great, right? It's almost a bullseye. I've got a great production sample. I should have no problem with that. You might be producing the exact same color, um, or we think we are, and you produce one that falls there. Well, obviously, that's a problem. Those are a long ways away from each other. Um, and we often get support calls from customers who are dealing with this issue saying, hey, my color looks good to me, their color looks good to them, but our colors don't agree. Maybe that second arrow is so far from this color standard because what they were actually doing was aiming for a different standard. So if the standards aren't identical, maybe there's error been introduced over time, um, maybe you measured different things as a standard and so forth, both people who are who are producing those green arrows think they're doing well because they both nearly hit a bullseye, yet they're not shooting for the same target. Maybe that's oversimplified, but it is a real problem we see happening. So very important, we're sure we're all shooting for the same target, and a digital standard helps us do that. So what is a digital standard? Well, it's a, it's a number of things. We'll go through them rather quickly. Um, but it's about what data are we sharing? So it's basic information, like a name, the date it was created, um, even a unique ID. You can see here we've got a unique ID. We know if you're using, if your measurement has that same unique ID, um, we can guarantee that both of those were measured, uh, that both of us are using the exact same color standard. Um, it's about the spectral data, which is the measurement of the color. In our previous um, webinar in this series, we talked about how we capture that data. Well, now we're going to start using the data we've captured. So it's about the measurement of the color, and it's all about spectral data. Now, you might say, what about LAB um, or LCH data? That all comes from the spectral data. We can get there from to LAB or LCH. That's all math from spectral data. Um, but the spectral data is the key. We have to have that because LAB data, you might have two colors with the same LAB data under one light source or a luminant. Um, that have that don't match each other because their spectral data is not the same under another illuminant. Um, so we've got to be careful about that. That's why spectral data really matters. It's about associated tolerances. What's going to determine pass fail? Um, it's about the, the condition of the data, you know, measurement conditions and properties and instrument details. And here's a screen grab from our software showing the kind of data condition information we can gather. Is it reflectance data? Is it transmittance data, right? Am I, am I measuring with a specular component included or excluded, or am I using a 45-0 geometry? What, what size aperture do I have? Um, you know, am I doing any kind of UV filtering and including UV energy or excluding it or calibrating it? So many different possibilities, and all of those things have an impact on the measurement. And so it's key that we're doing the same everywhere. It's all about making things equal to ensure that our standard is good. So a digital standard will contain all of that information, which can also then help me to know when I do a sample measurement that I'm going to match those same conditions. 
so how do I create a digital standard? Well, as we said in our previous webinar on the series, measured with a spectrophotometer with those defined parameters. And it might be like this, where I'm measuring the reflectance data with a benchtop spectrophotometer. Maybe I'm measuring transmission, right? Again, using a benchtop, but now I've got the sample where I'm gonna measure the light passing through it rather than reflecting from it. And ultimately, I end up with something like this um, in the software where I've got, I've created an orange standard. I have LABCH values for it. Those are being calculated from the reflectance data. We can see the reflectance curve. We can see a visualization of the color and an LAB plot and so forth. So we've captured that standard. Um, if I have that standard captured and I can share it with you, we can both then shoot for that exact same target. So how do I share it? Well, um, it's, there's a number of different ways to do that. One, um, maybe the most generic way to do it is using something called a CXF file. And by the way, CXF stands for Color Exchange Format. And it's actually an ISO standard, ISO 17972. Um, X-Rite developed the CXF file format many years ago, and it was adopted as an ISO standard. Um, it's a universal file format that ensures accurate and efficient exchange of digital standards. So it's a, and that includes the measurement, the metadata, the reflectance data. And so when color communication is mission critical, CXF is the right way to do it. So in the X-Rite so software and even in some other software packages, you have the ability then, after you've taken a measurement, to export your data into what's called the CXF file, right? So we're gonna create this file. It's just an ASCII file, so it's fairly small. It can, they can get large if you put lots of data into them, but a single measurement is a really small file. Then you need to share that file. Maybe you email it to somebody, put it on a network drive, stick it on a memory stick, however you want to get it to the other person, who then takes that file and they import the CXF file. And that works with many software packages, including things like IQC, iMatch, EFX, and more. Um, and the way that that data comes in is exactly as if you had measured it into that software. So now we would have the exact same color standard. So that's a CXF is a very generic way to share the data across many different platforms. You can also do it sharing what's called an e-job from IQC or iMatch, and this goes beyond the CXF. Okay? Now I'm actually gonna share a job file that contains the color standard or multiple standards like a CXF, but it also lets us share things like screen layouts, trials, tolerances, all those kinds of things and more. So I could literally share my job with you with this orange standard in it that I had created, maybe even with these samples already in there, or maybe I've shared the standard with you You've, you, you are my supplier, so you've made six batches of this color and measured them in, and now you're gonna share, send the file back to me, and I'm gonna open it up, and I'm gonna see your measurements. So not only can I share standards um, and, and have us both shooting for the same digital standard, now we can start to share measurement results. So we can start to troubleshoot things like back at the beginning when we saw the two green arrows that weren't very near one another and start to understand why. So we have a standard, in this case, you can see on the left hand, upper left in the, in the screen grab, I'm actually looking at two standards in this job. I have an orange and a teal, so whatever colors I need to share with you, we can have multiples in there, we can share our data back and forth. Again, it's a file that can be easily shared via email, network, or other means. There's also a, a mechanism we can share colors using this thing called Pantone Live. So Pantone Live is a digital database that lives in the cloud. Most of us are familiar with that term at this point, right? It provides a large array of color standards in a wide variety of forms. So we have the traditional printed standards. You think of your traditional printed Pantone book, but Pantone also makes color standards for textiles and paint and plastics. And all of those can be accessed in, through a Pantone Live database, and that would give us the ability to ensure that the entire supply chain is aiming for the same target. 
now rather than having to send the standard around to everybody, if everyone has a Pantone Live license, they can go out and go to a specific Pantone library. This one happens to be TCX. And there you see a Pantone color. It says Pantone and its color number. TCX tells us that it's a it's from that particular um, library. HH meaning it's handheld. So we know that that was measured with a handheld. And uh, 450 is the geometry. Now maybe you want a different Pantone library and you want it measured with a benchtop sphere instrument. We have that available as well. The key here is you've got all these colors. You can see at the top of this one, this particular library has 2,625 colors already in it. Sharing that file or sharing that access with everyone ensures you are all shooting for the exact same digital standard rather than everybody measure their own individual swatches and, and just because of difference in swatches and instruments and everything, you introduce color difference. And so having the same digital target is eliminating that variable. So to, to summarize, sharing a digital standard, it's critical that the data shared is complete to, to avoid inconsistent results. And we're talking about making sure we don't um, misrepresent something because we aren't clear about what instrument was used or what aperture size and those kinds of things. We need to avoid the old just send me the LAB values trap. Um, the reason for that is LAB values are calculated from reflectance, but when I have LAB data, that only reflects, or I shouldn't use that word, sorry, that only depicts that color under one set of conditions, one illuminant observer set of conditions. If I need to look at metamerism and multiple light sources and those kinds of things, I can't do that if I just have LAB data. Reflectance data can calculate LAB under any conditions, but LAB data is very, very specific, and so it can be very um, nasty trap to get stuck in. So digital data, digital reflectance data is the key. And then lastly, ensuring that everyone is aiming for the same target allows you to focus on what I'm gonna call real color issues and correct them. So we wanna get rid of any doubt um, any suspicion that the standards aren't the same because if you're using the exact same digital color standard Then any color difference that you're measuring can't be due to the standard So you can start to focus on what is the real color problem is the reason my color is off because of a variable in my production Versus oh, we weren't shooting for the same standard That's the key. That's why digital standards are so important so that concludes the presentation for today. Um, as Robert mentioned, there is a questions panel that you can go to in this webinar. We're gonna give you a little bit of time to do that. So please, if you have questions, feel free to go ahead and post those. Um, and we will reach out to you and respond to you just as quickly as we can.